Hi, I'm Mick, and this is Rad Riders. Today, I'm going to be talking about riding gear, particularly off-road riding gear. Now, I'm not talking about racing gear. I'm talking about protection for green laning, off-road riding, trail riding, and adventure riding. Gear that will keep you dry, keep you safe and look good. I'm indoors today because it's absolutely howling outside. Um, I tried to start this video in my garage, but the rain coming down on the roof, you couldn't hear me speak. This is why I'm speaking to you from my kitchen. Now, when I first got into this sport a couple of years ago, you ride with what you've got. And if that's a pair of armored jeans, um, a hoodie, uh, armoured jacket, a cheap helmet and a pair of Doc Martins, that's the kit that you're riding. But the more you invest, the better your protection is. So the first thing is your helmet. The helmet that I use, because I like the retro style, is this one. It wasn't a particularly expensive helmet, but it's lightweight, it's got a good vision through there, it's full face and it's got a peak. What I mean by having a wide opening, you can fit goggles in there, and I do ride in goggles. It is a quite a light helmet. I have got all the helmets which I use on the road, but I find when I'm up and down on the bike doing my off-road riding, it's good to be light. So the helmet, number one. That's the helmet that I use. I pair that up with some 100% goggles. Um, these are my go-to goggles. It's important to wear goggles because if you're out with friends, there's all sorts of debris being thrown up from the bike in front. And if that catches in your eye, one, it can severely damage the eye, and two, your ride's gone. It keeps the mud, the rain, and the debris out of your eyes. The second part of my kit is the boots. Now, I used to ride in these adventure boots. And I used to think, well, these are good, they protect the shins, they've got a good sole on there, and they're comfortable, lightweight and comfortable. But if you fall off and turn your ankle, there is no ankle protection in that boot. That is basically, keeps the water off, protects your shins and your feet, but not the ankles. Go for an MX boot. When you first buy one of these boots, you think, what have I done? It, it, I can't walk in it, I can't ride in it because they are so stiff and they're meant to be. So if your foot does go down in a rut, you cannot twist that ankle. They've got plenty of buckles on there to keep it nice and snug. No, they are not waterproof. You do not want these waterproof because you're gonna get them wet. You're gonna go through puddles and ditches. The water's gonna go in and then the water's gonna drain out. Now, when you first get on your bike in these boots, you think, I can't ride in them. I can break, but I can't change gear. You're meant to lift your foot up and down rather than try and move your ankle because it won't let you move your ankle. That's the whole idea of the boot. Get yourself a decent pair of motocross boots. If you pair them boots up with a set of seal skin socks, which will keep your feet dry, and if your feet do get wet, they dry very, very quickly. That'll keep you comfortable throughout your ride and throughout your day. If I start from the base layers first, then I'll work my way to the outer layers. It's important to keep warm and dry. If you're gonna use a cotton t-shirt, it's gonna get wet with sweat very, very quickly and it's gonna stay wet. I go with one of these high wicking fabric t-shirts. This is a Caramore. Um, I'm not sponsored by any of these. These are my own clothes. I bought them myself, but this is a high wicking fabric. It's very, very lightweight. But and it's very, very comfortable to the skin. The second is shorts and protection. These are the shorts that I'm wearing. Ace Abyss is how I pronounce that. It's a padded short, very, very comfortable. It's stretch lycra material. It's got pads on the hips. It's got a base of a spine protector and padding on the thighs as well. It's also got a chamois sponge inner layer for comfort on long rides. This is my body armour and protection. 
This particular one is a Fox made one. It was a couple of hundred pounds, but a wise investment. It's got the D30 flexible armor, which goes hard on impact. So it's soft to the skin. And if you can see there, it's ventilated. So it allows air to breathe through it. When that's on, it's like a second skin with the armor, the back protector, the chest protector, the shoulders and the elbows. And as I say, it's flexible, lightweight, breathable material. The leg braces which I'm using are the Liat. Stops your joints from moving side to side or going forward. There's only one way it can go, is that way. Which is the natural way of, of you of your knee joint. It's also protection for impact on the shins, knees, and just above the knee. I have some motocross pants. Lightweight, durable, padded on the inner knees, and there's padding on the actual knees as well. Stretchable panels on the back, so they'll move with the bike, and they're actually shaped in the shape of a rider. Over my body armour, I wear a racing jersey. Again, when people see in all this gear, they think, oh, he's a professional MX rider. I'm not, I'm Joe Average. But if you've got the right gear, it's all lightweight, it's all breathable, it's stretchable. There's no abrasion resistance, but you've got the body armour underneath you anyway. If it's a particularly cold day, not necessarily when you're riding, but when you're out getting to the trails and getting back. Sometimes I will pack a Kais heated vest. I can run this from a battery for about three hours, or I can run it directly from my, directly from my bike. It's lightweight. Again, it's washable, wearable. If you're riding to the trails and riding home from the trails, this is a must. And the other thing is the gloves. When I'm on the trail, I just use these lightweight, lightweight gloves, which allow me to feel the controls. If they get wet, they don't stay wet too long. They're very, very lightweight. They've got knuckle protection. I can use my mobile phone. And the final thing is waterproofs. What if it rains? We're in the UK, it's green. Of course it's gonna rain, it always rains, especially when I get my bike out. Waterproofs, you can spend a fortune on branded, named Gore-Tex, triple-layered, laminated jackets that are never totally waterproof. The only thing that's really waterproof is a plastic bag. But then, if you wear plastic bags, you're going to sweat. So a good friend of mine, Nathan Millward, got me into this product. And I asked him what his jacket was. And I said, your jacket, it's not branded. And he went, no, no, it's military surplus. He said it's Gore-Tex, it's for the military, and it's stuff that's been used once or twice. You can get them in different gradings, grade A, which has never been worn, grade B, worn a bit, grade C, which is worn heavily, and they're 30 quid, and they're completely waterproof. So I'm thinking to myself, 30 quid for a waterproof jacket, that's Gore-Tex. Yeah, so I ordered one. They do several different ones, depending on which one you go for. They do a military British Army camouflage, but I don't see the point in riding a motorcycle and wearing camouflage. You want to be seen on the bike. They do a dark blue, which is the Navy, which is very, very nice, because it's got a big hood that fits over the helmet um, in severe weather. And then this one, the Royal Air Force. The Royal Air Force is a blue. It's Gore-Tex material, so it's breathable, it's lightweight, it packs down to almost nothing. And it has the reflective stripe on the back. So I wear my lightweight gear, and rather than a really thick over jacket, which I used to do, I throw on this bad boy. And I'm bone dry 
it's breathable, so the sweat's leaving my body if it needs to be. 30 quid on eBay. I've had this now for two years and it's worn it in all with us, even walked the dog in it, and it's served me very, very well. 30 quid. Army and Navy, check it out. Packs down so compact. And as a bonus, they also do the trousers. 30 quid. Grey day. Delivered Gore-Tex trousers. A full outfit which folds down when not being used. That's completely waterproof for 60 quid. Thank you, Nathan, for that tip. I've passed it on many, many a time. So that's it. If you've got your basic layers on there, you're going to be comfortable. Then if you add that with your protection layers, with your boots, your helmet, your shorts, your body armour and your knee braces, no, you're fully protected. You wear a light layer of clothing with a jersey and a pair of MX trousers over the top. If it rains, you don't need to have a big, thick, heavy wax jacket. You just basically have an army surplus jacket, which packs away to nothing. You can take it anywhere with you. I've been all over Europe and France with that, and it's held up in all weathers, and I've been bone dry at the end of it. I've even slept in it. So that's the gear that I use. That's the gear that I ride with. Once again, I thank you very much for watching. You've been listening to Mick of Rad Riders. If you like what you see, give us a big thumbs up. If you've got any comments, pop them down below. And don't forget to subscribe. It's completely free. Thank you very much for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Bye for now.